for us. Now you'll see if you click to the right using these arrows here in the gizmo, it'll take you to see that that has calculated the luminosity to brightness ratio or just the luminosity ratio, okay? So to use that to find the distance of the star, we can use this next graph. And you'll see that it's not a straight line, but as the luminosity ratio increases, the distance of the star increases as well. So the more that's changed from its initial brightness, the further away that star is. Just like those cell phones we looked at, they got dimmer the further away they got. If we know how bright a star starts and how bright it appears, we can see how much of that light has decreased. And our luminosity brightness is 0.624, and there's gonna be big differences in these. So you can zoom out to see high luminosity ratios, or you can zoom in to see little ones like the one we have right now, which is 0.624. So that's gonna be around here, and I'll get as close as I can. And it's just gonna let me go to 0.62 probably. But now I can see the distance of that star is 0.79 megaparsecs. Now I know the distance of that star, and that's as far as you have to get for any star in this gizmo section. So let's do one more star, and I'll just do it real quickly to remind you of the steps, and this time I'll be in region D, and I'm going to click this star to collect data, which is star D819, and you'll see that it's moving through that, but it's taking this star a lot longer to move through one cycle of this wave to move through one cycle of this wave. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the time probes, and this time I'm going to put it at the crest of the wave, which is about two days here, and I'll put it at the next crest of the wave, so we've been through one period or one wavelength. So I'm not at zero, so I'm going to have to do a little bit of math here, but what it's telling me is I am going from 29.2 days to two days, which means I need to subtract two from 29.2. That tells me the period of this is 29.2. I can again use that. I can see the mean brightness and just collect that data and see that it's 19.43, which is a lot dimmer than the last star that we looked at. So looking at our luminosity versus period chart again, I need to look for a period of 29.2 days, which means I'm gonna have to zoom out and find 29.2 days and see that the mean luminosity, or how bright this really is, is 10,063 suns. So we can see that star D819 is making way more light than star A171, even though it appears much dimmer to us. And because of that consisting, we can get a luminosity ratio of 518, which means that its luminosity, or its brightness, has decreased by a factor of 100. 518. So using the distance versus luminosity graph, we can zoom out to get bigger numbers, and we can go all the way to 518, or as close as we can, and see that that's at least 22.2 parsecs away. In this graph, uh, you can move it even once you've zoomed out, and you'll probably have to zoom out and move the graph in order to do it. And I'm still not sure if it'll let you go any further than that data, but you can conjecture that it's going to be greater than 22.2. So we've seen a star that's close and only had its brightness decrease a little bit as it traveled through space, and a star that's far away, and we can see its brightness decreased a lot. You're going to do the rest of these stars and put them not just in the gizmo, but also put them on your paper on your data sheet that you're assigning Canvas.